ई बायोलॉजी क्लास फातिमा कॉन्वेंट हाई स्कूल चैप्टर फोर्टीन सोर्सेज ऑफ एनर्जी स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ वी गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज बायोगैस एंड सोलार एनर्जी इन दिस सेक्शन इंप्रूवमेंट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर यूजिंग कन्वेंशनल सोर्सेज ऑफ एनर्जी वी अंडरस्टूड दैट फॉसिल फ्यूल्स एंड coal and petroleum are not renewable sources of energy and so we need to find alternative sources which are better than them and are more efficient we understood what is water resource and how water or hydro power thermal power can generate electricity with more efficiency now let us see another technology which gives us energy other than fossil fuels that is biomass we mentioned earlier that wood has been used as fuel for a lot for a long time if we can ensure that enough trees are planted a continuous supply of firewood can be ensured you must also be familiar with the use of cow dung cakes as a fuel we know that deforestation is a major problem so along with the fossil fuels even wood source of energy has to be replaced and cow dung cakes as fuel is the best source because india has a large livestock population this can also ensure us a steady source of fuel since the fuel are plant and animal product the source of this fuel is said to be biomass this fuel however is not produce much heat on burning and a lot of smoke is given out when they are burnt so we cannot use cow dung as a alternative source for wood when wood is burned in a limited supply of oxygen water and volatile material present in it gets removed and charcoal is left behind as residue charcoal burns without flame is comparatively smokeless and has a higher heat generation efficiency similarly cow dung all various plant materials like the residue after harvesting crops vegetable waste and sewage are decomposed in the absence of oxygen to give biogas since the starting material is mainly cow dung it is popularly also known as gobar gas so biogas is produced in a plant as shown in the figure you can see a schematic diagram of the cow dung gas storage or a biogas plant or a gobar gas plant the plant has a dome like structure built with bricks the slurry of the cow dung is inserted into this tank along with water and is put into the digester the digester is a sealed chamber in which there is no oxygen anaerobic microorganisms that do not require oxygen decompose or break down complex compounds of the cow dung slurry it takes a few days for decomposition process to be complete and generate gases like methane carbon dioxide hydrogen hydrogen sulfide the biogas is stored in the gas tank above the digester from which they are drawn through pipes for use and so biogas is an excellent fuel as it contains up to 75% of methane it burns without smoke leaves no residue like ash as in wood charcoal and coal burning its heating capacity is high biogas is also used for lighting manure for lighting the slurry left behind is removed periodically and used as excellent manure rich in nitrogen and phosphorus the large scale utilization of bio waste and sewage material provides a safe and efficient method of waste disposal besides supplying energy and manure 
Do you think that biogas is a renewable source of energy? Yes, you can call it to some extent as a renewable source of energy because again the manure grows plants and these plants are eaten by animals and animals they keep on generating excretory waste which keeps on getting used again and again to prepare more biogas. So an alternative source of fossil fuel and wood is hydro power and the gober gas or the cow dung gas which is better than the charcoal and coal. Now let us see wind energy. Now wind energy is the energy which is abundantly present in nature but it cannot be harnessed or utilized easily. We saw in class 9 how unequal heating of land masses and water bodies by solar radiation generate air movement and cause winds to blow. This kinetic energy of the wind can be used to do work and this energy was harnessed by windmill in the past to do mechanical work. Specially it was used for grinding floor and it is also called as floor mills where huge wind mills were erected and connected to the excel of the floor mill which would move the stones and grind the grains to give fine floor. Now for example in water lifting pump the rotatory motion of windmill is utilized to lift water from a well. Today wind energy is also used to generate electricity. A wind essentially, con mill essentially consists of a structure similar to a large electric fan that is erected at a height on a rigid support as shown in the figure. To generate electricity, the rotatory motion of the windmill is used to turn the turbine of the electric generator and the output of single windmill is quite small and cannot be used for commercial purposes. Therefore, a number of windmills are erected over a large area which is known as wind energy farm. The energy output of each windmill in a farm is coupled together to get electricity on a commercial scale. So you can see how wind energy can be harnessed to give us energy. There are large wind farms in Denmark because Denmark is called the country of winds. More than 25% of their electricity needs are generated through a vast network in windmills. In terms of total output, Germany is the leader while India is ranked fifth in harnessing wind energy for the production of electricity. It is estimated that nearly 45,000 megawatts of electrical power can be generated if India's wind potential is fully exploited. The largest wind energy farm has been established near Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu and it generates 380 megawatts of energy of electricity. So you can see how much the wind energy can be used but there are disadvantages with this. Wind energy is an environmental friendly and efficient source of renewable energy. It requires no recurring expense for production of electricity. But there are many limitations in harnessing wind energy. Firstly, wind energy farms can be established only at those places where wind blows for a part, greater part of the year. The wind speed should be higher than 15 km per hour to maintain the required speed of turbines. So you can see the limitations. Furthermore, there should be some backup facility like storage cells to make to take care of the energy needed for giving for needed for
during the period when there is no wind establishment of wind farm requires large area of land for 1 megawatt generator the farm needs about 2 hectares of land so the initial cost of establishing the farm is quite high moreover since the tower and the blades are exposed to vagaries of nature like rain sun storm and cyclone they need a high level of maintenance so these are the advantages of wind energy again now let us see which are alternative or non conventional source of energies when technology progresses our demands of energy increases day by day our lifestyles are also changing we use machines to do more and more of our tasks our basic requirements are also increasing as industrialization improves our living standards find out from your grandparents or other elders how did they go to school obviously they went to school by walking and we use activa scooters school rickshaw bus etc how did they get water for their daily needs when they were young they got the water from the wells and rivers which they had to go to fill walking but now we get it in the taps through the bore wells or the water pumps what means of entertainments they had they had social gathering dances fairs festival celebrations etc and we have mobile television cinema theaters etc so is there a difference if yes of course there is a difference if yes in which case more energy from external sources consumed obviously in the day to day or modern life as our demand of energy increases we need to look for more and more sources of energy and we could develop the technology to use the available or known sources of energy more efficiently and also look at new sources of energy any new source of energy we seek to exploit would need specific device developed with that source in wind in the mind we should now look at some of the latest sources of energy that we seek to tap and the technology designed to capture and store energy for that source so let us see an abundant source of energy that is solar energy the sun has been radiating an enormous amount of energy at present rate for nearly 5 billion years and will continue radiating at the rate for the about 5 billion years more only a small part of solar energy reaches the outer layer of the earth's atmosphere nearly half of it is absorbed while passing through the atmosphere and the rest reaches the earth's surface india is lucky to receive solar energy for greater part of the year it is estimated that during a year india receives the energy equivalent to more than 5000 trillion kilowatt per hour under clear cloudless sky conditions the daily average varies from 4 to 7 kilowatt hour per meter square the solar energy reaching unit area at outer edge of the earth's atmosphere exposed perpendicular to the rays of the sun at the average distance between sun and earth is known as solar constant so it is estimated that approximately 1.4 kilojoule per second per square meter or 1.4 kilowatt per meter square this much energy reaches earth can we utilize this as a source of energy if we are able to technologize this solar energy it is tremendous amount of energy and can replace any other source of energy now for that let us see an activity take two conical flasks and paint one white and another black 
Fill both with water. Place the conical flask in direct sunlight for half an hour to one hour. Touch the conical flask with one is hotter. You would also measure the temperature of water in two conical flasks with a thermometer. Can you think of ways in which this finding would be used in our daily life? Yes, a black surface absorbs more heat as compared to white or a reflecting surface under identical conditions. Solar cooker and solar water heaters use this property in their working. Some solar cookers achieve a higher temperature by using mirrors to focus the rays of light of sun. Solar cooker are covered with a glass plate as you can see in the diagram given here. It's a box made up of aluminum or any other metal which has got an insulating black coating inside and has a mirror cover and a transparent glass cover. The mirror is arranged in such a way that it can reflect the sun's light maximum possible over the food kept in the container. Now you will see that when the plate gets hot, the glass plate generates heat and it cooks the food. So if you see the structure, then it is particularly study the structure and working of a solar cooker and or solar water heater particularly with regards to how it is insulated and maximum heat absorption occurs. So maximum time black color is used. Design and build a solar cooker or a water heater using low cost material available and check what temperature are achieved in our system. Discuss what would be the advantages and limitations of using a solar cooker or water heater. You cannot use it when the atmosphere or the climate is cloudy and it will not generate or cook any food. So, it is only useful when it is a sunny summer day and the time taken for cooking the food is also very large and so it might take even double time than the normal cooking which is done on the stove. So we can say that the solar cooker has limitations like the other sources of energy. Now it is easy to see that these devices are useful only at certain period during the day. This limitation of using solar energy is overcome by using solar cells that convert solar energy into electricity. A typical cell develops a voltage of 0.5 to 1 volts and can produce about 0.7 watts of electricity when exposed to sun. A large number of solar cells are combined in an arrangement called solar panels and they can deliver enough electricity for practical use. The principal advantage associated with solar cells are that they have no moving parts, required little maintenance and work quite satisfactorily without the use of any focusing device. Another advantage is that they can be used in remote and inaccessible hamlets or where sparsely inhabited areas in which laying of a power transmission line may be expensive and not commercially viable. So in small villages, solar panels are a boon to the village. Silicon which is used for making solar cells is abundant in nature but availability of specific grade silicon for making solar cell is limited. The entire process of manufacturing is still very expensive. Silver used for interconnections of the cells in the panel further adds to the cost. In spite of the high cost and low efficiency, solar cells are used for making scientific and technological applications. 
like in artificial satellites and space probes like Mars orbiters use solar cells as the main source of energy because the other sources are not easily accessible. Radio or wireless transmission system or TV relay stations in the remote locations use solar cells or solar panels. Traffic signals, calculators and many toys are fitted with solar panels. The solar cell panels are mounted on specifically designed inclined roof so that more solar energy is incident over it. The domestic use of solar cell is however limited due to its high cost. And so in spite of being an abundant source of energy, it is having limitations. Each energy source has advantages and disadvantages. Thank you.